please. Thank you. Hello. Could we all resume our seats, please? Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Pendleton. The power I have up here is great. So, now the moment that you have all been waiting for, and before I announce the names of the two teams that will be going into the final round, can I just say how impressed I am with all of the teams? And uh, you have all done extremely well. You've been great participants and really enthusiastic and extremely well behaved. And I congratulate you all once again for getting to this stage. So I'm pleased to announce that the two teams going into the final round, and this I will do it in alphabetical order, are George Watsons and Trocaire. So, <laughs> in fact, the scores for all teams will be displayed on screens in the garden lobby of the Parliament after we have finished the quiz. And so could I ask the two uh, finalist teams to make their way to the seats in the front row of the chamber so that we can begin the final round. Thank you. <clears throat> you can bring the mascot if you want, if you feel lucky. Of course you can, yes. Okay, everybody's got their seats and their mascots and everybody all ready. So I'll explain what we're going to do. So this final round has 20 questions. The first 10 questions will alternate between the two teams, meaning that you will each get a different question. If a team answers correctly, they win the, uh, the point. If a team answers incorrectly, the question will be passed to the other team for a possible bonus point. So after we've done the first 10 questions, we will then do the next 10 questions and they will be buzzer questions. And uh, uh, you've got your buzzers in front of you and uh, Mark Pendleton will keep the scores. So please choose a speaker for your team who is going to give the answer. And if I call you to speak, please use the microphone because obviously it will help everyone to hear your answer properly. So, do we all understand what's going to happen? We have a speaker for each team. And if we're ready, then let's begin. So, to um, George Watson's, what is the capital of Liechtenstein? What is the capital of Liechtenstein? Uh, the capital of Liechtenstein is Vaduz. That is correct. To Trakir, what is the capital of Montenegro? What is the capital of Montenegro? Podgorica. That is correct. George Watsons. In which European city would you find the Triple Bridge or Tromostovye? Tromostovye. In which European city would you find the Triple Bridge or Tromostovye? Uh, Ljubljana. Correct. Trokir. In which European city would you find the Charles Bridge? Prague. Correct. George Watsons. Which French novelist wrote Les Misérables? Which French novelist wrote Les Miserables? I don't know. Okay, could I pass that then please to Trocaire? Which French novelist wrote Les Miserables? We don't know. We're not don't sure. Know. Okay, <laughs> so neither team got that one and the answer was Victor Hugo. Victor Hugo. So, uh, Trakir, which British author wrote Robinson Crusoe? Which British author wrote Robinson Crusoe? Okay, uh, so I'll pass that to George Watsons. Which British author wrote Robinson Crusoe? Watson. 
Oscar Stevenson. No. Daniel Defoe. Um, George Watson. Uh, which, uh, so, so George Watson, composer Antonio Vivaldi was from which country? Composer Antonio Vivaldi was from which country? Italy. Correct. Trockier. Composer Johann Sebastian Bach was from which country? Composer Johann Sebastian Bach was from which country? Switzerland. No, I put that to George Watson's. Composer Johann Sebastian Bach was from which country? Germany. Correct. George Watson's. Mayotte and Guyana are overseas regions of which country? Mayotte and Guyana are overseas regions of which country? France. Correct. Trakir. The Azores and Madeira are overseas regions of which country? Portugal. Say again. Portugal. Correct. Thank you. So, we will now move on to the 10 buzzer questions. Each question will be asked to both teams at the same time and will be answered by the first team to buzz. A correct answer wins the point. If the answer is incorrect, the question will be passed to the other team for a possible bonus point. Once you press the buzzer, you must answer the question immediately. And at that point, there is no conferring with your teammates once the buzzer has been pressed. So if you want to confer, you must do so before you press the buzzer. If the answer is incorrect, it will be passed over to the other team who may confer before answering. So, could we please test the buzzers? George Watsons? <laughs> yeah, I think it's working. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, Trakir. Okay, that's different. Right. Okay, so, are we ready to go? Which country's name is derived from the old English word for Northern Way? George Watson's. Correct. Which Nordic country has the largest puffin breeding colony in the world? Took here. Denmark? No. Uh, Iceland, correct. How many countries use the euro in 2022? Took here. 19. Correct. Next question. Name the Italian artist who painted the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Tokyo. Michelangelo. Correct. Next question. What is the name of the largest lake in Central Europe located? Tokyo. Lake Balaton. Oh, sorry, sorry. Lake sorry, Balaton. Lake Balaton. Correct. Next question. What is the largest country in Western Europe by area? George Watson's. Germany. France. That's incorrect. Talk here. Correct. France. Next question. Which famous puzzle was invented by a Hungarian? Talk here. Erno Rubik. Was it um, Erno Rubik? Take that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, sorry, I, I think you had... To repeat what you said first. Um, Erno Rubik. Yes. I don't know if that's the right answer. She's giving the name, but not... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, I try to see it Yes, OK. Uh, yes, I'll give you that. The answer is Rubik's Cube, but I, I think you were kind of there. Um, next question. Which sport is Ukrainian Alexander Usyk known for? George Watson. Correct. Next question. What, which is the largest of the three Baltic states? George Watson. Latvia. No, pass it over to Turkey. Which is the largest? Sorry. Turkey. Um, is it Estonia? No. Did they get another shot? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think we've done our shots. I'm afraid you don't get a second go. The answer is Lithuania. Okay, and last question at this point. Europe was named after... Europa. I think. Same. Trickier. 
<laughs> Don't because they hesitate. Did I teach George Watson there? I know. Oh, yeah, so, but they had hesitated. So they didn't. Okay, what I might do is just actually read the whole question, if that's um, <laughs> helpful. Okay, Europe was named after Europa, a Phoenician princess from which ancient... <laughs> George Watson's. Ancient. Correct. So, that was the last question to what was very exciting, certainly keeping me on my toes. And could I please ask you all to remain in your seats while we verify the scores? Thank you very much. Okay, now for the moment that we've been waiting for. Um, and I would like to present the prizes to the top three teams. And uh, in doing so, it gives me great pleasure to invite Leslie Brown, Chair of Scottish European Educational Trust, and Sir David Edward, who's patron of the Scottish European Educational Trust, to join me to present the medals and trophy. Thank you both. And in third place, we have Ken May Primary School. So could you please come to the front to collect your medals and prizes? Ken May.
second place in what was a very close buzzer round and uh, the uh, final round, uh, we have Trochir Primary School. That leaves uh, the uh, first place team with uh, a head by one point. In the final round, uh, the winning team then is George Watson's College. the late John Mulgrew. And so I'm delighted to uh, announce that George Watson's College uh, are the winner of the John Mulgrew OBE Award for Euroquiz. And please come and collect your uh, medals and your trophy. Thank you very much and well done. Very well done to George Watson's College and indeed to all the teams here today participating online and those who have participated over the, the, the recent months. It has been a, a remarkable uh, competition and I have certainly thoroughly enjoyed my afternoon. Uh, thankfully, there's not going to be a steward's inquiry, so I'm very relieved about that. And I would now like to ask Leslie Brown to uh, come to the lectern to give a vote of thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, what an afternoon that's been. I don't know about you, but I've been on the end of my seat over here with the excitement and the tension in the chamber. It's my pleasure uh, this afternoon as the chair of seat to be able to offer a vote of thanks for the afternoon that we've all shared. The COVID pandemic has meant lots of changes to all of our lives. We've had to adapt to doing things very differently. The Euroquiz final here in the Scottish Parliament during this time has had to be online. So we did manage to adapt, but hasn't it been amazing to be back here in the chamber today with this wonderful competition? So absolutely fantastic to be here. Sadly, towards the end of 2021, SEAT lost our chair, John Mulgrew, OBE. Sadly, he passed away. So today, I'm here as the new chair of SEAT, and it is my absolute pleasure to be here and to have the opportunity to say a few words. First of all, I would like to thank Deputy Presiding Officer Annabel Ewing, MSP, for chairing the event and for being such a fantastic quiz master. So thank you very much for that.
I would also like to say thank you to the Scottish Parliament for hosting us and granting us the debating chamber in person once again. After this two years hiatus, it's been so fantastic to be here and it's been particularly special. We're really grateful to Mark Pendleton from Coffee Break Languages for introducing the quiz, for providing the language videos and for taking us through the answers after every round. So thank you very much, Mark, for your time. Thank you also to our patron, Sir David Edward, for attending the event. And Sir David will also be kindly offering some closing remarks just after me. But congratulations to all of the pupils, the teachers and the families for all of your hard work and support. In total, over 400 schools participated in this year's EuroQuiz directly involving more than 2,000 pupils in those heats. This highlights the achievements of all of the pupils who have made it through to the final at the Parliament today. Thank you to our main sponsors for this year's event, the Scottish Government and the Ganachy Trust. We're also grateful for support from several small, smaller charitable trusts, as well as generous individual donors. There are several organisations and partners that provide support towards the preparations for EuroQuiz. Education Scotland and SILT for partnering with us in preparing the language questions, ensuring language content is at an appropriate and correct level for all of you here today. Native speakers from Coffee Break Languages who helped record the language questions in their native languages and local heat organisers for whom we wouldn't all be here today if we didn't have those people back in your local authorities who actually do all of that organisation. SEAT works really closely with those local authorities and their support is really vital in enabling all of you to come here today to this final. And we're really grateful to them for taking up the time to be able to do that. The Scottish Parliament events team have been absolutely fabulous today and I don't know if you've noticed them going around with their, their things in their ears and their microphones just making sure everything was where it needed to be and everybody knew what they were doing so a special thanks um, to them. And of course, the preparation for EuroQuiz and the planning for today would not have been possible without the hard work patience and dedication of two very special people and that's Jane Byers our director and Alex Conway our project's coordinator who are hiding up the back and a special thank you from me to them for everything that they've done. The final today is a wonderful opportunity to ce celebrate everyone who supports SEAT in making EuroQuiz possible. Finally, and most importantly, we would like to thank all EuroQuiz participants. We know just how much effort you've put into working as a team, learning all the languages, places, history, people and more across Europe. Some of the questions I found really hard and I was kind of struggling with. A remarkable achievement here today and a particular well done to our finalists, to Kemney, to Traquir and to John George Watson's College who are our winners. We hope all of you will continue to explore these interests as global citizens and remain interested in learning about the world and about languages all around you. So thank you again. I invite uh, Sir David Edward to say a few words. Thank you. It's a great pleasure to be here yet again after the COVID interruption. Um, and I would like to add my thanks to all those who the Chairman of Trustees has mentioned, and I don't want to create an invidious distinction by thanking anyone in particular, except perhaps Jane Halsey, who is really responsible for everything that SEAT does, I think. Um, and I would also like to add my tribute to John Mulgrew, who was an inspiration to all of us who've been involved with SEAT. He really cared and he did an enormous amount for 
uh, everything that SEED does, in particular this quiz. I was born before the last war, and that was a stage at which we didn't really know which way things were going. Uh, but we collected postage stamps, and we put them in two albums, one colored red and one colored green. Red was for the British Empire, green was for everywhere else. So, uh, to a certain extent, if you were an enthusiast for the British Empire, you didn't really care about the green ones. But if, like me, you were interested in the green ones, they included Europe. And the picture of Europe before the last war was uh, very different from the picture of Europe today. And the picture of Europe today is very different from the picture of Europe before 1989. So you have an opportunity to see how the, uh, if you compare you, uh, Europe to a, a kaleidoscope, if you've ever seen a kaleidoscope, the shapes move, but I think, I hope, we've reached a stage of stability, and that is due particularly to the enthusiasm of those who believe in the creation of a stable and a united Europe. I don't think that's got anything to do with Brexit. I think it has to do with a general feeling of uh, you, uh, concern for our future. And so I'm enormously impressed by the extent of the knowledge shown by everybody who's taken part in this quiz, and indeed by all of those who took part in the earlier rounds. But in particular, for the runners-up and the winners who have shown an extraordinary degree of knowledge and uh, understanding of the Europe we now live in. So, can I add my congratulations to you all and thank you very much indeed for coming to here and taking part. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sir, Sir David. And so, thanks once again to, to Leslie and to Sir David and, of course, to Mark Pendleton for all your assistance and participation in today's event. And uh, once again, uh, my thanks and congratulations go to all the teachers involved and all the extra work that you had to do, including the teachers who were doing the marking today, keeping everything right. And uh, once again, thanks to all the pupils uh, in all the schools represented here today, in all the schools who took part in the competition from the beginning. Uh, uh, you have all uh, done yourselves proud and I hope that you take that away with you today uh, uh, when you uh, make your way home. So uh, I hope you all have enjoyed your Euroquiz experience. I know that we in the Parliament have very much enjoyed having you all here today. And one last thing, um, in a moment uh, I'll ask you if you, when you're leaving the chamber, if you could join me uh, on the steps of the garden lobby so that we can get a nice big group photograph. And uh, in a moment, then, you'll be making your way to the back of the chamber where the event assistants will help you to do that very thing. Could I ask you, please, to check that you have all your belongings with you as you won't be coming back to the chamber, including your mascots, although I think it might cheer up the Parliament a bit if we had some of the mascots here for the rest of the week. It might improve our behaviour, but who knows? And one last thing, certificates and goodie bags will be handed out to all participants as you leave the building. I close this session.